Devs by Alex Garland is not like other TV shows. Its characters are cold, its pace is slow, and it spoils its own ending. Because it isn't built like a series, it's built like a philosophical debate by a sci-fi writer who actually understands science. I'm not interested in getting that stuff wrong. I'm only interested in trying to get it right. The story is inspired by Skunkworks Labs, secretive corporate tech divisions which gained prominence in World War II when Lockheed Martin first made fighter jets. Today, DuPont's experimental station, Amazon's Lab 126, and Google's X are the most well-known. Devs is the Skunkworks Lab of Amaya, Garland's fictional quantum computing company. Its mission, develop a mysterious machine whose purpose we aren't told, but which Forrest, the CEO, will kill to protect. The show is a gold-plated philosophical feast and is driven by a powerful story engine. What in devs are they building? In the beginning, Sergei, the protagonist's Russian boyfriend, is recruited to devs after successfully using a quantum computer to simulate a uh, nematode. Yeah. Whoa. By tracking the nematode's 302 neurons, Sergei predicts the exact behavior of a living organism 10 seconds into the future. The simplest organism we could find, but yes, we did. I love it. But beyond 10 seconds, the simulation breaks down. And the further ahead we look, the more data between now and then, and the less accurate the simulation. This idea returns later. While walking to his new job, Sergei still has no idea what he'll do. Not AI, not encryption, not search engine. Maybe national security. <laughs> I don't give two fucks about national security. Devs itself is incredibly secure. Protected by a 13-yard concrete shell, then a gold mesh, then an 8-yard vacuum seal with its labs held up by electromagnetic fields. Then, in the center, surrounded by shimmering, Blade Runner-like light, is the machine. Whatever it does, it sickens Sergei to his core, and he steals its code with his James Bond wristwatch. After Sergei is caught and killed, Lily, our hero, begins her investigation with the ironic support of Forrest. You have my personal guarantee that I'm all over this. Lily's discovery leads her to question devs and opens the show's Socratic debate. What is devs? Name a random event. Take a moment, think about it. And then name one. A coin flip. A coin flip is not a random event. It's a complex event. How hard was the coin flipped? What was the weight of the coin? The angle it landed on the table? Meteors landing. Roulette wheels spinning. Misfortunes suffered. They can all be unraveled. You can't name a random event because there are no random events. Everything was determined by something prior. Now, take a computer. Give it all the data that can exist about this pen rolling across the table. Its trajectory, velocity, mass of its component parts, atomic structure. What can the computer now tell you? It can tell you how hard the pen was pushed, and it can tell you when the pen will stop rolling. The computer can see backwards. The computer can see forwards. Now do that with everything. Not just the pen. Everything. That's Debs. This is where the show requires some suspension of disbelief. To perfectly predict the future this way would require gigantic processing power, which Garland acknowledges. If you want total accuracy, zero variance, you're literally gonna need a computer the size of the universe. One qubit per particle. Good fucking luck with that. But regardless of the artistic license taken with the machine, the idea it proposes, that our futures are like tram tracks, is uncomfortable. It would demonstrate that you don't have free will. So the first thing that would happen is people would have to, to really take on a very, very different idea of what they were. That, I suspect, would be very, very disturbing to a lot of people. Especially if you, like Lily, are intuitive and don't think in long chains of cause and effect. 
。啊，这里为什么这样像？我就喜欢狗狸嘛。为什么狗狸？真是个感觉。对，我同意，是狗狸。As the machine evolves, the thought experiment is visualized. Using time codes and GPS coordinates, the team surveys the past, from wars to Joan of Arc to Lily's message for corporate investigators and Marilyn Monroe getting it on with Arthur Miller. Got it, Stuart. So you'd be cool if we brought everyone in to watch you having sex. Not sure the system is powerful enough to predict that far back in time. When the machine is complete, the team looks a second into its own future. Oh shit. Oh shit! And then at the entirety of human history in cave scenes that go full Terence Malick. Some of the wall paintings are five thousand years apart. Five thousand years in the same place, making the same images. The first thing Forrest does with his high-res machine is look at his daughter, who died by his negligence, and after whom his company, Amaya, is named. <laughs> These things, they run deep. It's like whatever we know, the things we feel are still locked inside us. Human beings are hardwired, magical thinkers. Therein we find the true purpose of devs. If the machine proves that reality is a set of tram tracks that defines the future and the past, then Forrest doesn't have free will and wasn't responsible for his daughter's death. If it works, you're absolved. You did no wrong. But if it doesn't work, you had choices. If it doesn't work, I'm damned. Yes, pretty much. Because Forrest needs determinism to be true, part of him is scared we might be magicians. That someone could see their future on the machine, and having seen it, decide not to act it out. An idea paid off at the climax. As foretold, Lily goes to devs. Forrest plays for Lily the simulation of the ending for two reasons. One, he deterministically believes he can do nothing about it, and two, he's confident his machine knows everything about him and can therefore resurrect him inside itself, where he could live simulated at a point in time he's pre-selected. And you can guess where that would be. But then, as the future is played out, Lily discards her gun, breaking the machine's predictions, and Stuart disables the magnets around the capsule, ending Forrest's attempt to play Deus over the future and the past. Where most TV philosophy feels extraneous to the story, in Devs, the philosophy is the story. People in your world show me things about how the world works, and then I say, "This is how I feel about what you've told me," and then other people can react to that. Every single thing I've learned is beautiful. One of the motivators for me is that I think that people tend not to see scientific thinking as being essentially poetic and lyrical. But I think that is literally exactly what it is. I think the idea of entanglement, or the idea of superpositions, or the fact that you could even demonstrate a superposition, or have a machine that relies on the existence of superpositions in order to function, to me is is almost indescribably beautiful. I, it, it's as good as it gets, as far as I can tell. Determinism operates on cause and effect, which means when we look ahead at our futures, the act of looking gives us a new cause. Which we, like Lily, can then use to affect our real future. So you do what you always do. You follow your own path. And if you don't like what's ahead, change it. 人不可能两次踏进同一条河，因为那条河变了。那个人也变了。